Like a filter fish! Thank you for the enthusiastic response to our first video. Yeah, seven likes. Wow. <laughs> I, I, seven. Uh, anyway, the top five. This week it's my week. Um, so yeah, we should we should probably explain a bit about the. I think it's fairly self-explanatory. Top five. <laughs> top, top five. <laughs> There's so many comic book films these days, and, and they're the big ones now. Yeah. You know, this and year the big, the top three are going to be Spider-Man, Dark Knight, Avengers. They 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 really are everywhere now, and they're more pervasive than a lot of people even realize. Like uh, Road to Perdition, for example. Yeah. Based on a comic book. Mm. Anyway, on that note, number five. <laughs> the only surprise here is that it's not higher. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There we go. The first one. The first one, of course. What year was that? Uh, nineteen ninety. So this movie, um, everyone, the big craze was this this early cartoon for kids, but they went and they made like a fairly dark grown up movie with. Unbelievably realistic turtles made by the uh, Jim Henson Company, which mm. hold up to this day unbelievably. I think. Yeah, the, the puppets are outstanding. Oh yeah, um, they're, just... <clears throat> they're, they're fat, like I still believe that they're just they're just real. <laughs> um, <laughs> bloody Raphael nearly gets beaten to death in this movie. It's it's scary stuff. I haven't seen it in so long. Yeah, but... I know. It's probably not much to talk about here because most people haven't. But I've I've got it on Blu-ray. I watch it often. Yeah, yeah I mean I. I'm heavily biased here. I haven't liked Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three Turtles through time, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I one of the most anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> Point is, I'm not worried about Michael Bay's version of the Turtles because they've already made a fantastic Ninja Turtles movie, um, so he can't he can't hurt me anymore. <laughs> he can't hurt me, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hurt me. Uh, another one a lot of people probably don't know is based on a, a comic book or a graphic novel that some monkey people call. Um, a History of Violence. Mm. Um, David well, Cronenberg. Cronenberg. Uh, mm. um, yeah, just great, great film. Tell like, what's awesome about that film is Ed Harris. He's, I love he's Ed Harris. so good Very in that scary. Movie. Um, really yeah, scary. The movie's just a, it's such a slow burn, but then it just mm. comes out with these bits of violence, which are just, like, if you know Cronenberg, it's, oh. it's intense. Like you can tell it's a Cronenberg film just on the the well, yeah. and the time. Yeah. yeah, really, really great film. I, I I haven't read the comic myself. I haven't. I think it's probably one of those situations where the comic's probably not that interesting, mm. and they've taken and made a good movie out of it, mm. like uh, say Men in Black. What did that say? Is this sex scene on the stairs or something? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, in the commentary, apparently, it was the first sixty-nine shot in a film. Really? Yeah, like a non-pornographic film. Yeah, yeah if you like Maria Bella. Gets yeah. stuck in this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he gets stuck in this. Yeah, he gets stuck in a crotch. <laughs> anyway, yeah, really cool film. Really, Cronenberg really kind of pairs it back. He he does like a kind of realistic drama with this one. Nothing, no people turning to flies. Anyway, really, really cool movie. Very R rated. Um, but check it out. Okay, number three. Uh, one of my absolute favorite films from whatever year it came out. Uh, I think it was two years ago. Uh, Kick Ass. Yeah. Hey, 2010. Yeah. 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 Fantastic movie. I saw this thing about four times, I think, in the cinema. It, it just blew me away. Like, it was one of those movies, you see it coming and it's like, it looks cool, it looks fun. Mm. But then you watch it and it blows you away. It's this is, since kick came out, there's been a lot more gritty, you know, realistic, grounded takes on the superhero genre. It does get outlandish and crazy, and that's half the fun of it. But yeah. it, was, uh, it was a cool new take on the, the genre and, you know, it was incredibly violent, oh. incredibly awesome. And for me, and I've read the comic, it's almost like a revised edition of the comic. Yeah, my favorite thing about this movie is that I don't like the comic. Mm. And I did, I did read it after seeing the movie, but I think Mark Millar, I find, is a really good ideas, ideas man. But uh, his execution, I don't always like. Mm. I, I don't even, I don't like the art that much either. Oh, well you have to get out now, because that's John Mead <laughs> Jr. I do we don't, we don't get off topic, but you're wrong. <laughs> so we'll just leave it at that. But yeah, the direction they went in the movie was much That was a really cool... I loved that about the movie. I thought the costume was great, and I just loved... I loved that. And the action sequences oh, throughout that film. Uh, yeah. Wow. Well, when Big Daddy breaks into that warehouse and blows oh. everyone away. Holy shit. That Nuts. All, every time I saw that movie, I was just on the edge of my seat. Just... Hey, I hope they do a sequel, but I don't think they are going to. Well, Kick-Ass 2 is coming out now, the comic. 
Okay. Ooh. I think that those were plans. But I hope Matthew Vaughn stays on for the next one. Yeah, even though X Men First Class. As I said, it's a revised edition. It's, you know, it's better than the comic. Yeah. Absolutely, and that's that's just the the strongest point of any uh, comic book adaptation. If they can go beyond what the comic book did, and uh, this is one that definitely did. Yeah, definitely. Number two. Number two. Number two. Um, <laughs> it is a number. It's a number two movie. But anyway, my choice for number two is Spider Man Two by Sam Raimi. Okay. I watched the Blu-ray recently, a uh, director's cut version. Uh, just absolutely fantastic. I think of films that deal with what it is to be a superhero, this is uh, about the best there is. Uh, using the, the Spider-Man No More storyline, where Peter Parker just wants to give it up, mm. um, just fantastic. And Doc Ock is the villain. Just that first scene in the hospital oh, where they're trying to surgically oh. remove it. Oh god, and that is so oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the silhouette on the wall, and you see it going. Oh mm. man, that was yeah. The, the bone sore. And, oh. It's kind of a bit tired. The old good scientist goes bad in an experiment, but mm. uh, uh, the action scenes with Spider-Man and Doctor Octopus. Man. Mm. When he's trying to stop the train. Yeah. Like, oh, oh man. Yeah. That and was cool. it's been a while since I've seen this, but the scenes that I remember. One of my favorite scenes from that film, maybe not scene, but like kind of that story arc, was when he's trying to create the sun from the element. Mm. And the first time he does it, it fucks up. And, like, and at the end, when he finally creates it, but it's too big to support itself mm. without sucking everything else in. And when they have to drown it, oh uh, man, that's a great that was like fucking awesome. Yeah. I don't know if it holds up like CGI wise today, but from in my mind, it does. Oh shit, it looked cool. Mm. Yeah. So I wouldn't, uh, you know, interesting choice. I wouldn't have put it in my top five, but yeah. that was that. Those were the ones that really cemented comic books as viable blockbusters. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. All right, number one. Number one. Number one. The number, the number one comic book adaptation film of all time, in my opinion, of all time. Yeah. The Dark Knight. No. Oh. No, you thought I was going to say it. I'm not going to. I'm um, no, I'm gonna go a different way with this. Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Oh yes! Oh, oh yeah, good man. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um another one I think I saw about four times in the cinema. Just Edgar Wright, marry me. So kinetic in the way he directed oh it. Oh my god. Amazing. You can just keep watching you sit down. Like you would want to watch just like a second of it. But you can't stop. He and uh, and Gore Verbinski, they are my absolute favourite action directors and they mm. haven't even made action movies really. No. Because what he does in Scott Pilgrim, like the fight choreography, oh. the oh. the special effects, just how inventive everything is, the sound design, it's it's amazing. Just the imagination behind some of what they're doing. And I mean that last battle sequence alone. I lo I really do love the movie. It the only problem I have with it is it towards the end I'm sort of like another fire. Especially the DJ one. Oh yeah, I'm I sort mean, of like I, uh, we, you keep saying things that are wrong, George. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to touch upon a point that you made before when you said you sit down, especially with Scott Pilgrim, and you wa you start watching a bit of it, mm -hmm. and by the time you realise what's happened, the film's ended and you watch it. It just thing. snowballs. Always happens. This has happened three times to me with this film. This recently. An hour goes by, that's it. When we were in America, it, it uh, came yeah. up. We, we tuned in about halfway, watched the whole thing, and being America, they played the same movie again and again. So we caught it again from the beginning. It's like, and we watched it again. <laughs> it's so good. It's just fantastic. It's, it's a good time. Yeah, and I think it's important to note that your list has embraced uh, com the, you know, comic books, uh, they're crazy. And these movies are crazy, whilst The Dark Knight is like what we were saying before. It's like a crime movie. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, like a, it's a comic movie. book movie that's kind of ashamed of its origin mm -hmm. as a comic book. Yeah, well, like you said before, when we were doing the Avengers review, comics are the bright colours, you know, big action, thing. they're outlandish. Mm -hmm. And these films silly. manage to pull off this outlandish nature, but still have you not thinking that was, that, that would never happen. <laughs> you, you're there along for the ride and at no point, I mean, especially in Scott Pilgrim when he dies and he comes back. It's like, the, the, that would totally, that's, I can totally go with it. Scott Pilgrim, yeah, like, there's nothing real about it. Like, no. he kills people and he's exploding the coins. Coins, yeah. And, but <laughs> and at, nobody at, cares. At, at no point are you like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Like, it's just, it works. Like, that universe just works for you. Like, oh. Michael Sarah. Sarah. God damn, he, I love watching him on. I just. He's so funny and. Uh, Such a douchebag in this, too. He <laughs> is, yeah. <laughs> he, he's a lot better than he is normally. Because he's normally quite a bit mopey and a bit boring. I yeah, find well, I always enjoy him. 
I mean, uh, man, we're really just not on the same wavelength. Today. Yeah, he's he's kind of, he's kind of characterized by kind of playing like the kind of softly spoken nerdy kind of dude mm. who's kind of cool but maybe not really kind of, kind of semi cool but doesn't really know. In this one, he's kind of playing like I wouldn't say polar he's, opposite, but he's, he's kind of like stage. he's a yeah, 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 yeah. he knows he's cool and he's a bit of a he's yeah. a ladies man and then he comes up yeah. against his match with uh, whatever her name is. Ramona, oh, and she's a hottie. Elizabeth Winston. And oh, no, one thing I will was... say is the soundtrack. Dude. Sex Bomb oh, Arm. Oh, shit. Down, 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 All down, the music down, 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 tech down, 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 down. composed specifically for it. Mm. Fantastic. It should have got, should have got together. It's and just so eclectic in its feel. Oh. It's, it's, and I think that really works to its strength. And um, I've never been so sad that a movie bombed. Uh, yeah, at least the Blu-ray picked it up. Yeah, and I think I think it did well. And yeah, it's destined to be a huge cult classic. Oh, it's a good list, Benny. Thank you. Yes. Um, I do have a few honourable mentions. Yeah, yeah go for it. I want to it. Mention very briefly before Men in Black, one of my one of my oh yes favorite films. Uh, comic was apparently just a piece of crap, but uh, they I think they just did such a great job. It was such a fun movie. Um, another one, kind of in that vein, uh, another ILM special effects movie. Uh, the Mask, starring Jim oh, Carrey. Oh yes, one of the most fun movies. Same. It's just Ace Ventura on crack. That's it's a spicy meatball, though. <laughs> it is a spicy meatball. They really captured the spirit of the comics, even though they weren't hugely faithful to kind of the details. Just the feel of it was spot on. And one of my favorite uh, comic book films is Hellboy Two, and that would have been in my top five. Uh, a lot of people find it weak on story. A lot of people don't get engaged with it. But I think it's just a fucking great movie. Yeah, yeah. It's I, the, I chucked it on the Blu-ray, I think, a couple nights ago, and it is so beautiful. I don't know if you guys will go for this one, but Watchmen? Oh, yeah. Um, the Watchmen? I feel that's kind of the opposite of what we were talking about, where, yeah. you know... It's better, better yeah. Like, it, it only... I think the only way it works is as a companion piece to the graphic mm. novel, kind of like a, just a visual version of it, because that's all Snyder did. He just... Put it on screen. That being said, fuck you, Zack Snyder. <laughs> sucker punch, I'll sucker punch you in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Dark Knight just because I fucking love that film. And I... that? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That... Yeah, don't think I don't like those movies. They're absolutely amazing. But, but uh, I just, I just have more of a soft spot for the ones I mentioned. No, I have to say, like, I can totally understand your point of view mm. from like, it's kind of ashamed of its roots. I mean, because like. Dark Knight is it's a comic book film trying to set itself in reality and making mm -hmm. everything plausible. Uh, yeah, so Dark Knight and Mask of the Phantasm, probably one of the first Batman films, animated mm -hmm. films I had ever seen. And yeah, quite frankly, I have to say, that's probably my favourite Batman film. I love that film. I love that kind of 50s noir, uh, like oh, noir yeah. animation. And yeah, definitely just an honourable mention to the, uh, the Bruce Tim, like he was the main runner of the uh, DC animated universe. One final one I'll throw in there, uh, Blade 2. Oh, Guillermo. Guillermo del Toro. Uh, just awesome. Awesome. The best one of the three, in my opinion. Oh, easily. I haven't seen the third one. I heard it's pretty awful. Yeah. It's um, okay. That, that yeah. wraps it up. Yeah, so that's Benny's top five. Here's to many more great comic book films in the future. Oh, we can only have a few right? coming up. And stay tuned for our little most anticipated video, yeah. video on uh, Dark Knight Rises. Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. 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 Coming up uh, soon. Yeah. <laughs> Extra spicy. Yep.